Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we are going to send out a broadcast email to our existing contacts. And in order to do that, we are going to come to our dashboard. We're going to click Create Newsletter. Now, unless we are adept at HTML source editing, we are likely to use the drag and drop email editor. So we're going to go ahead into this facility. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to choose the list we're going to be using. And then we're going to write in a message name. Now, this message name will be for our benefit. This will not be seen by our subscribers. So we're going to write one in that will be recognizable to us and it will designate what it is that we're actually looking at when we see this email in a list. We'll then need to write a subject line that will be seen by our customers. In fact, it'll be the subject line that they'll see in their email box first before they actually see our email. So we'll go ahead and write in a subject line. Now in this particular case, what we want to do is we want to choose then the email address that we're going to be using. And we don't have an email address set up in addition to this one. We're going to go ahead and use the one we have. Keep in mind though that it's not a good idea to use Gmail as your from email when you are using or any other autoresponder for that fact. Now, if you click the distribution sentence button, what you'll see is that you have some choices that you can make. You can actually choose to track the click throughs. You can track what happens with your prospect once they've clicked your link using Google Analytics. And you can actually split test emails when you're using the AB testing. You can actually make it so that this email is shareable on both Twitter and Facebook. Of course, you'll need to add an account in each case. Now, in this case, what we're going to do is we're just going to go to the next step, and we're going to do that by clicking Next Step. Now, GetResponse gives us a number of different templates to use, and they work much like the landing page templates that you saw in an earlier video. In most cases, what you'll be using is a plain blank email, and when that is the case, we're going to click Start from Scratch. Now, GetResponse will give you templates that you can use that will help you if you want to put images inside of your email. Now, if you're going to send the traditional blank email, what you'll do is you'll click blank template. That will open into a plain white email that you'll be able to customize. And once again, to keep your emails simple, you will then use the text block and all you'll need to do is to drag that text block over. Once you drag that text block over, what you're going to notice is that there is text on the inside. And when you click the text box, you're actually going to see a WYSIWYG editor that you can change the text or the font with. Now to get rid of the text, you're going to want to highlight the text. And just as you would in any word processing software, you're going to delete the content. What you're now going to do is you're going to write your content in. Now we're going to cut and paste from an article, but you would actually be writing. What we're going to do is we're going to cut and paste this information inside of the box. And once the content is there, we're going to work with it as we would with any particular word processing document. So for example, we probably don't want all of the text in bold. Now, once we actually have the text looking the way we want it to look, what we will do is we will then customize the actual look and feel of the email to the visitor. And one of the ways that we can do that is to personalize the greeting. And we can do that by putting a personalization code inside of the email. So for example, in this particular case, we can write the word hello. And then we can choose the personalization code, which looks like a person click that button and then you'll see fields that you can actually change. Now in most of these cases we'll be able to use any of the codes that GetResponse actually gives us. In most cases we'll use first name. So now what this email is basically going to say it's going to read the first person's name based on how they are in our autoresponder and then we're going to be able to send this email as a broadcast. Now there are other elements that we can actually place inside of our email. We can drag in an image, we can drag in image and text, we can drag in an image and text block. 
We can also drag in, in some cases, we can drag in a webinar. We can add in social sharing buttons. We can add in a PayPal button as long as we have our PayPal address integrated. And we can add in snippets. So once we have our email in the way that we want it to be, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and save the email. But before we do that, we want to make sure that the individuals that are getting this email, if they're using plain text, that they will actually get an email that they can actually read. And so we're going to do that by going to this plain text link. We're then going to click HTML to plain. And then we'll probably need to make some adjustments in terms of how the email is actually going to look. One of the ways we can do that is we can actually click wrap long lines that will reduce the margin size. And then we can go in and re-include our spacing. Once our spacing in plain text looks the way we want it to, we will click close. And then we are actually going to want to save this email. We can do that by clicking the draft button. So we're going to save this as a draft. And now all of our changes have been saved. We can now go to the next step inside of the email. Now one thing that you're going to want to take note of is the look of the actual email inside of a mobile device. We can actually see that in this particular case. And if we know that this email is going to look this way in a mobile device, we can actually make changes to it so that we can see it the way we want to see it. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to make some changes to this email, to the margins, so that it will look the way we want it to look on a mobile device. Now in order to see our changes, what we're going to do is we're now going to save this as a draft again. And you'll notice then that our content has adjusted. It's probably still not exactly the way we want to see it, so we may need to make some more adjustments to our margins. And we'll now save our changes again. And you'll see now that we are well within our spacing inside of our email. So we're always going to be looking to make sure that we understand exactly how our client is going to see our email when we're looking at the GetResponse mobile device. Now this is a mobile preview. And when it looks the way we want, all we're going to do is we're going to click Next Step. We will then want to choose who is actually going to send our email. And we can actually include any one of our lists inside of any broadcast email. In this particular case, we're going to not include the automate your email list. We're going to include this one. We can then filter out if we have custom filters. We can choose to exclude certain recipients based on what list they're on. We can actually suppress based on suppression lists that we have created before. And once we have defined our parameters, we're going to click Next Step. When we get to the screen, GetResponse will send us a spam score. And ordinarily, a spam score that's close to five is pretty close to being on the borderline. So you could go back and actually make some changes to make sure that you don't have a lot of spammy language in this actual email. Now, we're not actually going to send this email, but you do want to check your spam score and you do want to do what you can to lower this score before you actually send it because this warning is an indication that you may be rejected by some inboxes. Now, what we can do is one of three things before we get ready to send. Number one, we can actually use perfect timing. And perfect timing will actually send an email based on where someone else lives in the world on the perfect time for them to receive an actual email. And we can choose to send that email based on those parameters. We can also schedule an email for the future. We can do that by clicking the schedule button or we can send this email immediately. So what we're going to do right now is we're just going to schedule this email for the future and we're going to schedule it for a day in advance. What we're going to do now is we're going to click the schedule button and then we'll see our email ready to be sent. 
Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video.